Hi there, summer school kids. And it's really special for me to know that you were reading Nim's Island for your summer school reading. So I hope you had a good time, and I really enjoyed your questions. They were really, really hard questions, and I had to think about some of them. I bet you didn't know that the author sometimes had to think about the questions. So... I'm going to start with Jackson's question. How did I think of this story? Well, it started a long time ago when I was in grade two or three. And we went to visit my grandparents who lived on an island. It was a big island. But on the ferry there, we passed a little tiny island. And I thought I'd like to live in that island. So I went Back, went back home and I wrote a story called Spring Island about a little girl running away to live on an island. And a long, long time later, when I was a grown-up writer, I thought about that story. And I was working on a story about a little girl who was writing to an author. And the author was a very famous and snobby author who said, oh, my life is much more interesting than your life because you're just a little girl. But the little girl's life was much more interesting than the author's. And I didn't know why at first, but then I thought, because she lives on an island. And then I remembered the story that I'd written when I was eight or nine. And that's when I started writing Nim's Island the way you know it now. So that's how I thought of that story. Now Jackson also asks, am I adventurous? And a little bit. I do like doing new things and finding out what I can do. And just doing things that are a little bit different. But the other part of me is that I work kind of like Alex Rover and I sit in my office and look things up in books and on the internet. And before I uh, did this video for you, I went to Google and looked up where Trinity was in Florida. And I saw that you are actually in a much warmer place than I am in Australia. But I'll answer that question a bit later. Now, Jacob wanted to know why I told you at the beginning that Nim's mother was dead and not in the middle. And that's a very, very good question. That shows you're really thinking about how stories work. I'm very impressed. But the reason I wanted to tell you at the beginning was because Nim not having a mother isn't the most important thing in this story. So I thought, well, I'll tell you right away so you don't have to worry about it. And now you don't have to wonder if she's coming back or if I'm going to find her because she's gone. And that's really sad, but it's the way it is. And so we've got that all out of the way and we can concentrate on the adventure. And of course, in children's stories, often there are no mums because your mum likes to look after you. And so... Sometimes authors are pretty mean people, you know, so we get rid of the mum so you can have some dangerous adventures in the book. Jacob's other question was, how can Nim talk to the animals so that they understand? Well, do any of you have dogs? Dogs especially, cats too, but if you have dogs, you know that if you talk to them a lot, they get to understand pretty well. And I figured Silky and Fred are kind of like pretty smart dogs. So I'm going to try a little experiment here. Harry, Harry, come and talk to the kids. He's a bit confused because he can't see you. But when I said talk to the kids, he went and looked out the window because he figured you must be out there. So I figure that Silky and Fred are kind of like Harry and they understand most of what Nim says. And somewhere it does say that Selfie doesn't understand all the words Nim says. She understands the good words like food and fish and Jack. Good boy. Sam wants to know why Nim chose Selkie and Chica as names. It's another good question. Selkie is the word for um, a creature from a story 
from old stories in um, Ireland and Scotland. And selkies were seals that sometimes became women. They sometimes took off their seal coats and became women. But they were always seals too, so they were kind of half women, half seals. And I thought that my selkie was like that because she acts as a nanny or a babysitter to Nim. She really tries to be Nim's mother. So I gave her that name because I gave it to Nim to give to her. I gave her that name so you could see that she was kind of half woman and half seal. Chica, I did really just cause a little bit of a joke because if you study Spanish, you know that Chica means little girl. But of course, Chica is not a little girl, is she? She's a great big girl of a sea turtle. So that was just a little joke. Robbie wants to know, is Chica a loggerhead or a green turtle? Which was something it took me a long time to decide. Um, and the reason I chose a green turtle in the end was because I wanted her really big. And the green turtles are bigger than the loggerheads. Um, and you point out that on page 115, it says green turtle, but it's not capitalized. And that's a very, very clever reading. Um, to show that she's a green turtle, I really should have capitalized it. I think I decided it didn't matter so much if you knew exactly which type of sea turtle she was. Now that might be wrong. Sometimes I don't make the right choices. Maybe I should have said uh, which one she was, but it didn't quite fit in that sentence. I just wanted a little bit of description. And in fact, green turtles are really more brown than green, but again, it didn't quite work in the sentence, so I cheated a little. You're really, really showing me where I had problems. So now, Troy's question is next, but we're going to answer it last for a good reason, Troy. Daniel and your teacher want to know how Alex figured out that Nim was a girl, because Nim doesn't really give any clues, and that's true, and the name Nim certainly doesn't give you any clues, because that, that can be for a boy or a girl. I've just found that when I get letters from kids, uh, that have a name that I don't know, or I don't know if it's a boy or a girl, I can usually guess right. And I looked at the letter again, and I thought, I think she knew because Nim ended the letter with that the story had a happy ending because the hero and the lady hero fell in love. And I think Alex guessed that a girl was more likely to end her letter with the word love or to talk about the love than the boy reader. Again, that's not always true, but that's, that's what I think she thought. Now, Troy asks where I live now, and I thought what I'm gonna do, because I'm filming this on my iPad so that I can pick it up. I live in Australia. And I live in the southern part of Australia. And I'm going to take this outside. Southern part of Australia where it's colder. So we're actually much farther from the equator here than you are in Trinity. And we're more like San Francisco. We're, that's about how far from the equator we are and that's about how cold we are. And there are great big trees. I live in a forest in Australia, we call it the bush. And it's winter now because the seasons are opposite to the United States. And I'll just turn this around so you can see our big trees. I hope that answered your questions for NIM. And I hope that now you've finished your reading, you all have a really, really good summer holidays. So bye.